What's happening in that classroom? <laughs> musical we'll chairs. Know, yeah. Oh, you next one. Okay. <laughs> How's everyone? Our formal, normal greeting round. <laughs> everyone doing okay? Ready for the exam that's coming? Confident? Mm hmm Yeah. Well, you should ask me back. Are you ready? I'm not ready. I still have to make that exam. So then you can convince me. Put easy problems. Please. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you call You can hypnotize me. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about that and towards the second half. Mm -hmm. So actually, the first section was packed full. And maybe some of you went over there, I guess. I don't know why that was a full class, but this is less crowded, so we don't feel so stressed out. Okay, so they were all expecting a lot from me. Okay, so we will learn something new today and then we'll review, all right? So, some method to solve ODE. Mm -hmm. So, not the most important method because it's too restrictive and it doesn't really. Um, does not work that well, but okay. It's a legitimate method and it can be used if your situation applies. Okay, so let's see. Set up the problem. Our standard setting. So let me write the dependence. X is a function of t, and its derivative is given is a function of t and x itself. And you should think now x depends on t also, right, in there. So it will appear as x, but you keep in your mind, it depends on t. And then you have a, your initial condition given, okay? So we try to solve that. Okay, so the method based on Taylor series. Do we still remember Taylor series? Yes? <laughs> the whole class built on that. Yeah. Okay, so you have a t0, so I want to look at the next time step, which is t1, which is t0 plus h. We're just considering uniform grid here. Okay? And then what do you want to find? You want to compute the value um, x at um, t1. Is that right? Or some approximation of it. So this will be x at t0 plus h. So what I'm going to do now is thinking x as a function of t, I'm going to expand this here, its Taylor series, expand it at t0, using every information at t0 to predict the value at t0 plus h. Okay? Taylor series. at t0. Okay, so x at t1 theoretically would equal to, if I expand this, I will have x t0. Do we remember the Taylor series? Mm -hmm. h times x prime at t0 plus h square of 2 x double prime t0 plus and the general term is h to the m, m factorial x to the derivative m at t0. That's just Taylor series writing it out. Okay, so here comes the main idea. So when I write out Taylor series of, of this x, I have to actually specify, I have made a very big assumption. I assume Taylor series exists. Is that right? Because it doesn't always exist. If your function after some differentiation becomes discontinuous, then you can't differentiate it anymore, then there is no Taylor series, right? So, assuming Taylor series exists, which means all the derivatives of x exist to any, any order you want. 
which means you can differentiate this f in t as many times as you want, and it's still a function. Okay, so just be aware that that is actually a pretty big assumption to put. Okay, that's when this works. So the main idea is the following. So theoretically, this value equals to the sum of all these terms. And then I see this term is multiplied by h, h and that's h squared, and so on and so forth. And if h is small, which is the case, then this term is small, this is even smaller, and this term will be much, much smaller, right? So what I will do will be, I will just take a partial sum, I'll just add up the first, say, m terms, and use that as an approximation. Is that clear? So use partial sum to approximate. That's a very simple idea. So what does it mean? That's x1 now which is an approximation to x at t1. It's not x t1, it's my approximation, right? It's computed as adding this up, x t0 plus h, um, x prime t0 plus, I will add up m terms and then I stop there. And I stop. Right here there's dot, dot, dot. There are infinitely many terms that I dropped. Is that OK? OK, let's take a look at the arrow in every step. OK, that's the local arrow. Every step I am making this arrow, and they accumulate in the end. You get a sum over all these arrows. So what is the arrow? <sighs> x, the exact value minus the approximation that I throw in. Assuming it has a Taylor series, the exact value is expressed by the Taylor series. And I'm taking only the first m plus 1 terms to approximate. So the arrow I'm making will be all the terms from m plus 1 to infinity. Is that right? Those are throw away. So this will be actually summing over k from m plus 1 to infinity. I throw away infinitely many terms. So hk k factorial x to the kth derivative at um, t0. Is that right? So we talked about Taylor series at the beginning of the semester. And um, we also introduce the Taylor theorem is exactly used to estimate this error. So Taylor theorem says, if you have a sum like this and it's finite, it converges, then the sum in the end is dominated by the leading term, the first term here, right? So it says the first term, which k equals to m plus 1, factorial x to the m plus 1 derivative evaluated at some value cosi. That will dominate the arrow. Okay, so this is um, Taylor theorem. Okay, we did not prove it, okay, but we, we did mention and that's something we keep using. We've been using it over and over. Okay, so anyone remembers where is this famous Kasai. Is the Kasai famous? For some Kasai lies on the interval, where does it lie? Between T0 and T1. Yeah. Between these two points, one is the point you expand and the other is the point you evaluate the function, right? So T0, T1, T1 is just T0 plus H, so make it clear on a very small interval. Is that okay? All right, so let's take a look at the simplest cases. So the simplest one will be when m equals to 1. You can't take m equals to 0, then you're just always taking the initial data. So you at least have to take two terms, meaning that I will be using just two terms to approximate x1. So let me write this out. This will give me x1 equals to x at t0, which is x0, plus h times x prime at t0. 
So how do I figure out what is x prime at t0? Where do I get access from x prime? It's on the board. It's the second line I wrote. x prime equals to what? It's the differential equation. Is that right? I'm given x prime equal to f, and I'm trying to solve it. Is it? So is it OK? I plug this in. So this becomes x0 plus h times f at t0 and x0. OK, so that's like taking one step. And once you have computed x1, you can use it to compute x2, and then use x2 to compute x3. You can keep going on until you reach the final computational time. OK, so the general expression, the iteration for step k, well, is nothing but changing x, the 0 into k, and change the 1 into k plus 1. K from 0, 1, 2, so on, until the final computing time. I don't know, maybe, okay, we can put in there. There is a final time, a final number that you will stop. You can stop. So I'm pretty sure you have come across this method somewhere, haven't we? What did we call that method? That. Fixed point. Mm? Is that a fixed point? Uh, no, a fixed point is uh, to find zeros, right? So to compute, if the derivative is given at a point, and then you go in that direction with a tiny step, and then you stop, and then check the derivative, and then go a tiny step, that's basically what it's doing. Is that right? In calculus, you were not introduced to it? I thought you were. No? Euler's method, have we heard of it? Yes, no. <laughs> OK. Now, I will be specific. This is one form of Euler's method. I will write it specifically. That's forward Euler's method. There is a backward one, OK, which we'll introduce later. Right. So what will be the? Um, what will be the next one? <coughs> Let's say the next step, m equals to 2. So how do you think I will work out? So next one now will be, so I'll be taking three terms, right? So I'll be taking this one, and this one, and this one. Okay. So let me write that out first. So it'll be x0 plus h times f at x t0 x0, but then I add one more term, h squared half um, x double derivative at t0. So how do I get that? Any suggestion? So remember what was here was x prime at t0, right? We wrote it. In using the differential equation, how can I have access to the x double prime? What do you think I have to do? I need to figure this out. x double prime at any time t. Can I have access to that? It's just f prime. Differentiate one more time. Is that right? Is that <laughs> It's very simple, isn't it? You think it like that. Then the first derivative is nothing but f t x t. OK, when I write prime, I mean differentiating in t. Is that clear? So can we perform this derivative in t for this kind of a composite function? The chain rule, the tree structure, we remember. Are we OK differentiating this? You will first have to differentiate f with respect to the first variable, f sub t, right? And then you stop there. And then, because f depends on x, you have to differentiate it in x also. And then x is a function of t. The chain rule says 
you will have to add x prime. Is that right? Okay. All right. So what? So we can write out f t, f x, and x prime is just f. All right. So we get an expression for x double prime. Okay. So let's plug this back in and write out x one will equal to x zero plus h f t zero x zero plus h square half of this thing, be careful, everything has to be evaluated at t0, x0. Is that okay? So if you want a general iter iteration for step k, all you need to do is change 0 into k and change 1 into k plus 1, which I would not write down. It's obvious. Is that all right? So after these derivation, would you be able to write out Taylor series method for m equals to 3? Can we do that? Would you be able to do that? I mean, I'm not going to do it. It's repetitive. It's the same idea, isn't it? The, say m equals to 3. The first three terms will be there. You'll be adding one more term, h third over 6, x triple derivative. How do you get that? Well, take the form of the x second derivative and differentiate this one more time in t. It gets big. That's all. Is that OK? So that's that. Ft and fx are the partial derivatives of ETF. Yeah. Okay, so let me explain my notation. So uh, do we know partial derivatives? F sub t means partial f, partial t. F sub x means partial f, partial x. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Okay, I can say that you can carry a similar computation for higher m, say m equal to 3 or so. It just gets a bit big if you want to write out the general form. And later on, when we look at concrete examples, when you write out what the f is and those partial derivatives actually are not that bad. Okay, we'll have examples, but not today. So. How was that? I plan to stop here and uh, we'll do a review. Any questions on it? So the rest you have to wait until the Monday after Easter if you if you come. <laughs>